I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for the Hello Spring shelf sitter. I pre-painted some of the pieces just so the video isn't an hour long. So if you have any questions that it seems like I'm skimming over, just please reach out to me. Um, so the first thing you need is a piece of cardboard. If your kit came in a box, you can go ahead and tear some pieces off of that to use that. If not, um, like this is a piece of an Amazon box, um, just whatever scrap that you have. The cardboard just makes it really easy for the paint to dab onto without disintegrating. So to start off with, I painted, if you follow the instructions I gave you, um, I started with the yellow colors. So I painted the pea, these two flowers, and the bird's beak. You don't need to worry about not painting the middle of the flower because we can cover that later. So go ahead and paint the whole thing. When you're painting your pea, use a very, very light touch and make sure that you dab most of your paint off onto your box so that it doesn't flood the etching and that will keep it nice and dark. Then after I painted the yellow pieces, I went with blue. So I painted the bird and same thing. I didn't worry about um, his eye because we can fill that in later. Same thing with the R, use a really light touch so that you don't get into the etching. I'm gonna paint the G for you. So if you have questions on that, just watch that before you start. The bird's wing and the stand that has the adhesive backing on the back of it. The other stand that has no stickiness is on the bottom. It is going to be covered, so there is no reason to paint it. So don't worry about that one. So I'm gonna set all of those aside. Once your yellow pieces are done, the pea and the two flowers, you're going to take, oh, sorry, first, now, then with the white, I painted my backer. So that is the only white color. Um, I'm gonna set that aside. And then once you're done painting the backer, I'm going to dab, take the same wedge that you painted your backer with and dab most of the paint off. You just want a light amount. And then I'm just going to shade the first, the, or the top part and the bottom part. So all I do is very lightly, I start at this top and I slowly make my way down. Just like that. And same with the bottom. Start at the very bottom and very lightly make my way up. I'm only gonna go about that far. Um, you can really do as much as you want. Um, just I just try to match it with all of the letters. And then with the flower, I generally have mine hanging over the side of the table, but then it's off camera. It makes it a little bit easier. But just on the very edges of these yellow flowers, I'm just going to dab a little bit of white paint on them just to give the just a fun little color shading right there. Okay, now I'm gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna go to the mint color, and that is the G and the tulip stem. So if you have questions on the etching, this is where you're gonna wanna start and then go back to the beginning. Um, if you didn't have questions on that, go ahead and press pause until you get to this point. So I'm going to dip my wedge into that mint cup, uh, color and then dab up and down. And I'm gonna start painting away from the etching just because that will deposit most of the paint. You don't wanna start right on the etching. So I'm gonna start on this top part of the G and then I'm going to work my way down. And I'm dabbing really, really light. Um, it's not going to completely coat my G. I already know I'm gonna have to do two coats but it's better than um, having your paint run everywhere and glob everywhere. And that is that for that one. I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And then we'll do the stem. Once I get to this end part where it separates, I like to uh, kind of squish my wedge so that I have a little bit more control and I'm only working with a little part of it and I move a little bit slower, not in a hurry. And I set that aside. And then you want it to be dry. Mine, I put so little paint that mine is already dry. 
my piece is smooth, so I technically wouldn't need to sand it, but if you feel yours and it's very, very rough, because sometimes the paint will lift the grains, um, the wood grain, then all you need to do is take your sandpaper. Um, don't press down and sand really hard because that will remove your paint. I just, with the lightest touch, I just go over it one time and that should completely smooth it down. Most people don't need to do that, but um, it just depends on your piece. And then I'm gonna do one more coat just to make sure every bit of it is covered. And again, just dab it really, really light so that your etching stays dark. And same thing with the tulip. If it's rough, just one little tiny swipe. And very lightly there. Okay, now to do that shading slash ombre, keep the same wedge, the mint wedge, and you're gonna take this dark, I, I think I call it dark sage. I didn't really know what to call it. It's like a darker greenish, bluish gray <laughs> kind of. And you're gonna take only the top half of the wedge right here. You're gonna wanna keep this part, that mint color, and I'm just gonna dip that end into that darker sage color. Then find a clean edge of your cardboard, and you are just going to rainbow that out multiple times until you start to see that blended color. And when that is blended, I'm going to start at the top of the G, the very edge, and this is a very light touch, by the way, and I'm just going to rainbow my way down. And it should naturally blend it. I actually want mine to be a little darker, so I'm gonna go ahead and put more of that darker sage on it. because you can see it started to blend, but I want it to be a little darker. It's a beautiful blending, but I want it to be more of a contrast and not as subtle. And now I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do a little bit lower. This can be totally customized. You can do as little or as much as you want. But if you keep going, doing this back and forth motion, it's gonna blend it itself. And then we're gonna do the bottom part of the G. Okay, so that is how my G ended. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the stem. Since the stem is smaller, it's a little bit harder to blend. So this is gonna look more shaded than blended, but I'm gonna take a lot of that off and I'm gonna use a very, very light touch and just go around the edges. And like I say, this is more of a, just like an outline versus the ombre, just cause there's not as much space. I'm just gonna kind of wipe the ends of the stem just to add that um, outline there. Move down on the stem to kind of blend that a little bit. And so that is the stem and I'm gonna set this aside by the pink for when we get ready to do the bud. And that is all for the mint color. The next color that you're going to do is the lightest pink color, which I pre-painted mine, so you're gonna wanna press pause and do yours. Um, so I did the N, the hello, and the butterfly wing. I did not paint the butterfly body, so when I was going, I'll show you. So I just very carefully, um, oh, I'm on, make sure I'm on camera. Very carefully just went around the butterfly body. The reason I didn't paint the body, if you plan on using your paintbrush and the black paint to paint the butterfly body, then you can cover the whole thing and it would be totally fine. I think it's easier to use a Sharpie to color since it's smaller and it's more detailed. So I didn't want paint on that, otherwise the marker has a hard time sticking. Okay, when that is finished, I am going to take this medium pink color 
Um, where's mine? Oh, right here. So you've got, this is the difference. You have the lightest pink that is barely, really barely a color. And, oh, just kidding. I almost skipped. If you want to outline um, your piece, you this is completely optional. I, I can't remember if I did it in the example photo or not. When you're done with the lightest pink, you're going to dab most of it off on your wedge because you don't want a whole bunch. And then I'm just very lightly going to go around the outline of my piece. And it gives it a fun little, just like a little shading and it just makes it look, I don't know, just more detailed and it's a really fast, less than, less than two minutes to give it that much detail. This part is going to go in your stand. So don't worry about if that looks messy or if it's um, not covered at all, cause you're not gonna see it. And I am very, very, very lightly dabbing. So once I get around the outside, I'm also gonna go into these little cutouts and just do a couple dabs there. Did I hit everything? I think I did, yeah. So then it just kind of gives it a nice little outline. Then, we're gonna get our medium pink color. So we have the lightest, lightest pink, this medium pink color, and then there is the bright pink. So go to the middle one. And same thing we did with our mint color. You're just gonna take the very edge, dip that into that medium pink and then find a clean area of your cardboard. I use mine for multiple projects, so I need to get another scrap and just rainbow it out until you feel that it's getting blended. And I'm only going to do this on the butterfly wing, and I'm going to do most of this, this, this medium pink color, just so that the lightest part is right in the, um, right next to the body. More of that. Concentrate starting on the outside and then slowly working your way down. And as you work, am I still on? Yes. As you work your way down, lighter touches. Okay, oops. So that's what that looks like for now. Then I'm going to get my fuchsia color. St stick with the same wedge. It blends so much nicer. I am going to press pause because I'm gonna get another piece of cardboard. Okay, got my new piece of cardboard. So now I'm gonna take the same wedge and where I put the medium pink color, I am going to dip into that fuchsia color. And then I am going to really wanna blend that out because it's such a harsh difference. And then let's go with, oh, accidentally touch that. I'm gonna start with my butterfly and I'm just gonna go on the tips of the wings now. And a little bit more. And just the tips. And just moving back and forth to blend that. Hi, Cubby. Got a hair on there. So this is what your butterfly wing will look like when it's done. So there's that. I got a little bit on the antenna, but that's okay. Now let's start with our N. I 
I'm actually going to dip a little bit on the lighter color. I'm gonna dip a little bit there too, so it can blend a little bit nicer. Okay, now let's go on the top part. Super light touch at first, just to make sure we're not getting too harsh of a line. And just slowly work your way down. Back and forth. Just lots of rainbows. I'll do a little bit lower. And then let's go to the bottom part. And if you're finding that you want it darker, reload more with that fuchsia color. If you need it to be lighter, put more of the light pink on the light pink side and it will blend it out. So I'm good with my end looking like that. And let's do our hello. Same thing, I'm gonna load some fuchsia, a little bit of that light, and rainbow that out. And then I'm gonna do the tops and the bottom of the hello. So I work my way down and then do that with the L's and try to keep it a little bit even. So as you can see, I hope you can see that on the camera, like it, it looks, it will look rough. So don't, don't be afraid if it's not looking blended. It, that's why I'm going back and forth multiple times that's what's going to blend it. And then I'm gonna do kind of the tops and sides of this little curly tail. Get some more. And do the bottom. Just a lot of back and forth. There is no real secret to that. And then I'm just looking and adding where I feel like I want to, like a little bit on the tops of this H and E and O. And we'll call that good there. Okay. Our next, I'm looking and seeing. Oh yes, our next part would be the medium pink for the S and the bud. So let me go grab a um, wedge and I'll be back. Okay, once you paint your S and your tulip bud, that medium blush, keep the same wedge Dip into that fuchsia color and rainbow out until it's blended. And then we're just gonna do the top and bottom, just like all the other letters. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that medium color onto my wedge because it's kind of blending as seamlessly as I would like. Okay, let's go to the bottom part. And then the tulip bud, I am going to focus mainly on this top portion. And come down 
to the stem. Just a lot of rainbowing. That's all, nothing, no special skill. I'm gonna do that for the tulip bud. And then the last thing that we have left. Okay, sorry, I got a phone call and I had to get off. So we're going to the black. The black is a super harsh color. So the most important thing is to really dab most of that off onto the side um, because it's going to deposit a lot of color down and you just want you just want a little bit of shading you don't want it to be this harsh black line so i dabbed a thousand times and then you stick towards the top and go down as far as you want and then very very lightly start shading your way down the reason we're not using um the blue wedge we didn't we didn't shade with that same wedge kind of like we did with all the other colors um since black is such a dark color if you um try to mix it with any other colors it's just going to turn gray it's not going to blend very nicely it's just going to look really muddy and then i just did the bottom of the bird's wing and then I'm going to do the tail feathers and the top of his head and his belly. Now, if you find that you don't like, like let's say there was a super harsh line and you don't like it, you can always use, um, if you rinse out your wedge or if your blue wedge is still wet, um, you can always dab most of that blue paint off and just slowly kind of blend upwards. I don't really want to do too much because I don't want it to take the, the black away, but um, don't feel like, don't, don't be too afraid. Always start off light, but don't be afraid because you can always fix everything. Now for the butterfly body, um, you can use the mini paintbrush that I sent you. If you use the mini paintbrush to paint it, just make sure you rinse it off because you want, you're gonna need it when you splatter things. Um, I use a Sharpie. I, this is the only one I could find. I use, normally use a normal Sharpie or you can use like um, Crayola markers work really well. And I literally just color it. It makes it so much easier. This Sharpie is super annoying because it's a really fine tip and I don't know where I put my other one. Or honestly, if you just wanted to keep the butterfly body pink and you just wanted to paint it all the one color, it would still look really good. Hopefully you have a better marker than I do. This is painful. The last thing that I forgot to mention was the middle of your flower. I did that the medium pink. I'm looking around and making sure this was the last before we start to do other things. If you don't have a dotting tool, you can go ahead and use the back of your mini paintbrush. You're just going to dip it into that medium pink color. I just get a glob and I glob it right into the center and you might need to do it a couple times and I just slowly circle out towards the edge. Take your time so that you don't go over the line until it's, until it's covered. And do the same thing with the second one. Okay, I'm gonna let these pieces dry and then we'll come back on to do the finishing touches and the splatter and then you're finished. 
Okay, once everything is completely dry, you need it to be all the way dry. We're gonna do the finishing touches. So I'm taking the stand that you painted and peel the adhesive off of the back of that. Then take the stand that doesn't have any adhesive and line the edges up. It's really important to get it as straight as possible because you want the inner cutout to match so that your stand will fit. And then press down to stick. And I'm gonna set that aside. Um, now I recommend you doing one piece at a time and peeling off the adhesive for your one piece. That way you don't accidentally knock it over, stick other things to it. However, I pre-peeled mine just so that you don't have to watch me peel. So we're gonna start with the hello. And I'm gonna get a little close. Sorry if I'm blocking, but I wanna make sure that I'm following the etching and that it's all covered. Okay, and then once I set it down and I make sure that it's where it needs to be, I'm gonna go ahead and press it into place. And then we'll do the same thing with the butterfly. And then the bird. I always set it down gently, making sure that all the etching is covered before I press, just in case I need to move it. Make sure the S is the right way, because it will, it'll be different depending on where, which way it goes. And I just set my finger in paint. That's why I wear an apron. <laughs> so we can do that. Okay, P. R. I always check all sides. My tulip. And and the G. If you ordered multiple kits, the shading is the same. I'm still gonna do the um, video tutorials, but just so you know, I use the same technique for all this. Okay, and then the flowers. I'm gonna, you can really set them anywhere. I'm gonna set one by the butterfly and one by the bird. Now, oh, I forgot to tell you, I dotted the black for the eye and let it dry. I forgot to show that on camera. Okay, now if you wanna do detail work, I used a white paint pen. You can use the back of your mini paintbrush or um, whatever you would like. And you can do as little of this or as much as you want. But I did some lines along the butterfly's wings. I did a line down the H and the L and the L lined by the bird's wings. And then on the tulip, I went down the bud and down the stem. Then I got my dotting tool. Again, you can go ahead and use the Becca Mini Paintbrush if you haven't gotten this. If you haven't seen the link, if you do a lot of crafting, I recommend some of these tools that you'll wanna get. It just makes it a little bit easier, but it is not necessary by any means. And then I'm gonna dip into my white paint and I am going to dot kind of like a highlight in the middle of those flowers. And FYI, once you do this, it takes a while for that to dry just because it's a glob of paint. So be really careful not to drag your arm along. Otherwise you're gonna smear. Ugh, just one second. I had to grab a baby wipe because I keep being so messy. Anyways, you're gonna smear your paint and then you're gonna be really disappointed. So. Take my dotting tool and then I'm gonna go ahead and dot underneath the lines on the H and the L that I drew. And I'm gonna dot, make sure I'm on camera, um, three dots along the bird's wing. And then I just randomly place dots along each of these letters. You can't really see the P up close, or far away, but up close, 
it gives it some texture that's really cool. Again, just a reminder to be really careful where you place your hands. I have done that and it's, it's fixable, but it's annoying. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna move my camera over and I'm gonna show you how to splatter it. If you wanna leave it this way, great. If you wanna give it that splatter detail, I'm gonna show you that next. When you are ready to start splattering, um, a tip to make it a little bit easier, well, first of all, put down, if you don't, if it's warm enough where you're at, it's not where I am, you can do this outside on the grass, um, but if you're inside, you're gonna wanna get like a disposable tablecloth or like some boxes or paper or something in order to protect your surface. Obviously, I just reuse this over and over, so it's messy. Um, but you're either gonna wanna dampen the end of your mini paintbrush or what I like to do is whatever paint, white paint you have left over, I add a tiny bit of water. If you water it down too much, um, the only way to thicken it back up is to add more white paint or kind of set it out until it dries out a little bit. So only do that if you're very comfortable, but I add a little bit of water and then I stir it around because um, I want it to be a little bit of a thinner consistency and it splatters so much better. Instead of being globs, it splatters really nicely. So all you're gonna do is dip your uh, paintbrush into the white paint. And I usually do a couple small flicks off of my project just to get most of it off. And then go ahead and start with your stand until you're comfortable because it you're not gonna be as worried about messing up your stand. And this is all you're gonna do, just dip and flick. And you can do as little or as much as you want. I usually do a little bit more on the lighter colors because it doesn't show up as well. The darker colors really show that splatter really nicely. And that is it. And it's gonna dry a little bit lighter than um, it goes down. So leave it there till it's completely dry. Then you're gonna pick it up, put it in your stand, and you are good to display. Let me know if you have any questions or you need further detail on any of these steps.